Hey everybody, Justin Stivers, owner of the probate law firm. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, We're doing another, uh, this is section three, part three, stage three of, of, of the four stages of probate. Uh, this stage we're talking about assets, locating assets, dealing with creditors. Um, probably the, you know, for the, for you, for the consumer, for you who's going through the process, it's a relatively, say simple um, part of, part of the process uh, because for the most part, we, the attorney, that's where we're going to, you know, find, find all of the assets and deal with, deal with creditors. So this, this stage only comes into play if we're doing a probate where someone had passed away more than two years ago. So for example, uh, you know, I'm filming this right now in 2020. If the person died uh, in 2019, 2020, we've got to deal with this creditor period. If the person died more than two years ago, so let's say that the probate, uh, we start in 2020, but it was, but the person passed away in 2017, then we don't have to deal with this creditor period. But for purpose of this example, we're, we're, we're doing the creditor period. And this is, you know, so stage one, just to recap, you know, we're, we're getting everything ready. We're, we're ordering death certificates. We're trying to keep the peace with the family members. We're trying to, you know, locate everybody if we need to. Stage one, we're getting the, um, you know, we're filing everything. Um, or stage two, we're filing everything, getting the case going. Uh, and we get the personal representative appointed. So once the personal representative is appointed, now we can move into to stage three. So once the representative is appointed, uh, we're going to do a, what's called a notice to creditors. Okay. And that's mandatory in Florida. And it's a 90 day window from the date that the personal representative was appointed. Any creditors such as hospitals, credit card companies, um, you know, debts, anything like that, those creditors have a 90 day window to come forward and tell us the attorney that, Hey, they're owed X amount of dollars, they're owed money or, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's why the sooner that we can get the personal representative appointed and start this 90 day period, the better, because we can't distribute any of the money. We can't transfer any of the property generally until that 90 day period is up. So we need to get the representative appointed and then we have to put something in a local newspaper called a notice to creditors to let the creditor world know we started this probate and they need to, to come forward if they think they're owed any money. So we start that process. Um, the most, so let's talk, we'll start with creditors then. Most of, most creditors are going to be either, um, like I've said, uh, hospital bills, or credit card company or credit cards. Now, you should not just start paying these creditors out of pocket. Okay, this doesn't. This is not something that that you need to be doing. This should be. This is done through the estate. And what I mean by that is, if John passes away and John only had a thousand dollars in a bank account, okay, and a credit card company says, "Hey, we're owed ten thousand dollars." the most that that credit card company could get is a thousand dollars. Cause that's all John had at the time he passed. His creditors cannot go after his children, um, his heirs, generally his spouse uh, to, to try to get repaid. It really depends on, you know, how were the credit cards held? Did John own them individually? Was it a joint account that they opened together? Um, but most of the times, most of the time the, the creditors, you know, if there's no money there, you don't need to come out of pocket and you shouldn't come out of pocket to, to pay anything. Credit card companies are, are pretty common. What we do, and this is why, you know, you need an experienced, you know, probate attorney on your side is we will object to their claims and 90% of the time, 95% of the time, if not more, uh, the credit card companies go away without a fight. We just say, Hey, listen, we're not paying this. You know, there's some legal stuff behind it as to why we can actually say that, but we'll, you know, we fight them a little bit and then most of the time they don't get anything. Hospitals are a little bit different. Hospitals, that's probably the, the next most common um, or unpaid medical bills, or even if Medicaid, Medicare uh, didn't cover the entire stay or didn't cover, didn't um, cover everything, they will oft often file a claim. And they, we will object, but usually they put up more of a fight. 
if there's money, they're going to want a piece of it. Now, we've gotten a lot, a lot of it reduced in the past, and so they are willing to negotiate. Um, but if there's any money in the estate, they are probably going to want something. So what can they go after? Well, in Florida, we have what's called the homestead, protected homestead property. So they can't, if your primary residence, if you have your main home, those creditors cannot force your children to sell that home in order to get paid. So if all you own is 123 Main Street, and that's your primary residence, but you had a $200,000 hospital bill, that, ho that hospital is not going to get anything because that homestead, uh, that house is protected from them. But if you have money, again, bank account um, or something like that, they could potentially go after that. So we have that 90 day period where we are just kind of, we're waiting. We're waiting on for the creditors to say if they're owed money. If we know about creditors, we probably need to notify them as well and say, hey, listen, not sure if you're owed money. We thought you might might be so we just wanted to let you know we started this probate and we give them proof that that we serve them um those are probably the most common what we're also doing though during this time is not just about dealing with creditors that's where we're trying to locate any assets and close out anything a lot of times a lot of probates are going to involve uh, money in a bank account you know so john maybe maybe a husband and wife had a bank account at you know bank of america wells fargo wherever wife died now john you know now the the husband owns the account but then when he dies there's no beneficiaries on the account so his children can't go into wells fargo or bank of america to withdraw that money they're actually going to need a piece of paper from the court that we'd have to get in the in the probate process so we would start winding that what we were what we're going to do is we're going to try to locate where all that money is are there, are there bank accounts are there investment accounts that we need to liquidate are there life insurance policies that maybe didn't have a beneficiary on them? So now those, we need to get documents from the court in order to, to, get, to get those monies. Um, those are probably the most common that we're going to find. We're going to start looking at real estate as well. Uh, again, we probably can't sell it at this point, but we can put it on the market, start getting offers and, and be prepared to, to go to sale. So this 90 day period, really, we don't want to take the full 90 day. We want to try to be as ready as we can when that 90 day is up. But you know, that this first like 30 days after the representative has been appointed, we want to try to find these assets. We want to try to find out, you know, where, where, where was the money at? And then each bank is going to have different requirements as to what, what they're going to need. The, um, you know, one thing I'll say is, you know, we get a lot of clients who they'll go to, Bank of America, Wells Fargo themselves, and Wells Fargo will say, hey, you need this document, this document, this document, or you could try to do it yourself. Most of these times, these, these banks are not giving good information or they're making it seem a little bit easier than it, than it is. And I see a lot of people, you know, for months, they're trying to get this money and they go to one, one clerk at the bank or one representative of the bank who tells them another thing and then they just keep going and going and going and never getting anywhere you know, I'm pretty positive if, if you've got a bank account and it was owned by someone who's passed away or a life insurance policy and there's no beneficiary or an investment account, there's no beneficiary. You were going to have to go through probate. Don't waste your time dealing with them. You're probably going to speak to one representative. They tell you one thing. The next representative tells you another thing. And the next thing you know, five months have gone by and you haven't gotten any further and you're just frustrated and thinking about giving up on the process. Uh, in general. So that's what we're doing during these, um, you know, during this 90 day period, we're trying to find out uh, where these, where these other assets are and we're trying to liquidate them usually. So we have to, we're probably going to have to open up a, a separate bank account, a restricted bank account, uh, which we can only put money into that account. We can't withdraw it without the judge, the court saying that we can't. So just an example, let's say that uh, someone passed away, they have money at a Bank of America account and they have, a, have money at a Merrill Lynch account, investment account. We're going to open up a, uh, what's called a restricted bank account, probably at a local bank that we use here uh, in Florida. We're gonna open up a restricted account. We're gonna liquidate the Bank of America account. We're gonna liquidate the Merrill Lynch account and we're gonna put all that money into that restricted account that we have opened. 
I can't withdraw it. The attorney can't withdraw it. The representative can't withdraw it. The sister, nobody can withdraw it without, without an order, without a signed piece of paper from the judge saying that we can. So during that 90 day period, hopefully we li we've liquidated all of that money and we've put it into that restricted account. So that money's just sitting there. Now, once that 90 day period is up, hopefully we have liquidated all the money. So we know, you know, that restricted account has hundred thousand dollars in it. We have dealt with all the creditors. So hopefully, you know, day 91, no one else can file anything. Um, hopefully we've, we fought with the credit card companies and got their claims removed. We've negotiated some sort of payoff with the, with the bank if possible, excuse me, with the hospital if, if possible. And now that that 90 day period is up, now we can move into the final, final stage, which is, which is distribution. But, you know, if you don't have a copy of this, um, you know, a loved one has, has died. Now what? It's a book wrote, I, that I wrote on probate. Um, you can go to our website, probatefirm.com to get a copy uh, or email us at info at probatefirm.com. I go over this in more, in more detail, um, you know, kind of a lay it out step by step, you know, 90 days, month, month two, three, month four, what happens, what needs to get filed. Um, talk a little bit more about the homestead exemption, which I, which I talked, uh, touched on here about how that's exempt from creditors. Um, but yeah, so, so it's the, and it's the personal representative who, who is, you know, once the personal representative has been appointed now, now we on their behalf, the attorney on their behalf can start accessing, you know, bank accounts, getting statements and doing all of that. Because before, before you're appointed as representative, there's very little that you can do. If you're not represented, if you don't have that paper from the court, <clears throat> you can't go to, to the bank. You can't go and to the lender and ask for mortgage statements and find out how much payments are. You really can't do anything. It's not until you get the representative appointed that now you can start requesting that information. Now you get the statements. Now you can speak with the lender and all that. And so during that, you know, now during this 90 day window, this month, what I say, um, you know, two, three, and four, the, the second, third, and the fourth month of this entire process, now we're really able to, to start doing something, getting, finding the money and, um, and paying off any creditors if necessary. So probatefirm.com, um, you know, if you got any questions or want to get a copy of the book and um, yeah, feel free to shoot us any questions you have, info at probatefirm.com, happy to answer them and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.